don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Hello. Looks like a Christmas tree. in the world are the things we can't see. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm guessing that one or two of those movies are something you've seen and seen recently, and I'm guessing there might be one or two of those that maybe you're seeing tonight too. They're treasures, aren't they? These movies are ones, especially the ones that, because I chose those, those are ones I love. And some of them are the ones that every year my wife and I make a list and we're like, we got to see these movies. This has got to be a part of our, tradition, our Christmas tradition together, those in our family. But honestly, as I was like looking at those clips and thinking of those movies, they're heartwarming, aren't they? They're special, they're funny, they're fun. But honestly... None of them, not one of those, points us to really the truth, the real meaning of Christmas, do they? Except one. One of those up there does. A Charlie Brown Christmas. Now, I, I have this special love of Charlie Brown Christmas, and maybe it's because me and Charlie Brown have something in common, maybe. Um, but, but honestly, I remember... When I was just a little boy, I mean, it's been 50 years that Charlie Brown Christmas has been going. It's the 50th anniversary of when it aired for the first time. And I can remember just plopped down on the floor watching the TV at my grandparents' house and just special amazing times. It, it's there in my heart. But that movie is the one where actually Charlie Brown's saying, what is Christmas all about? And he's seeing all kinds of things that he, he doesn't like from his friends and family. And it's not like a pop quiz. It's not like he's saying, what's Christmas all about? Does anyone know? And he knows the answer. He doesn't until his friend Linus, right? And Linus, I love. He's brilliant. He's amazing. He has such insights. But we know Linus for one thing. What is it? His blanket, right? There's that guy, thumb in his mouth and clutching his security blanket. That's what we know Linus about. That blanket goes wherever Linus goes, right? And even if he is brilliant and insightful, even though he has amazing things to say and a great heart, all that happens in all the comics and cartoons are what? His sister just teasing him mercilessly and his friends also about that blanket. Well, blankets are part of our little kids though, aren't they? In fact, I asked 
Um, I, I sent out an email and put it on social media to see if any of our Good Shepherd members could give us pictures of their kids with their blankets. Let, let's look at some of those. They're so fun. Look at that. <laughs> Bison colors. I prefer Packer colors. Yep. So cool. Those are beautiful, aren't they? Security blankets are something for children, though. They need them. I I don't think it's an accident that half of those pictures that you sent me are of kids sleeping. They feel secure and warm and safe, and their security blanket is important. It actually helps children cope. Did you know this? That object. It's just a simple one, too, a blanket or a doll. But it does help them face life. They have something with them it gives them actually identity even. Well, there was one picture I called, my, uh, I called my parents and I had a blankie growing up. Yeah, a blankie, that's right. No mocking your pastor. But I called my parents up and I said, hey, do you have a picture of me and my blankie? And my mom said, I, I don't think, so. I don't know if we do, I'll, I'll look. But you do know you still have your blanket, right? And I'm like, what? No, no, I don't, mom. What? No. I actually didn't know I did. She said, yeah, I sent it back to you. We found it in storage and sent it to you a couple years ago. So sure enough, we found the thing. I want to pull this, this bad boy out. <laughs> really bad boy. It really is. Look at this thing. This is, was my blankie. Dirty, ragged, torn up. Look at the back here. Whoa. That's called love, by the way. Love right there. I, I had this thing, I kid you not, for almost like, till I was like 24. <laughs> months, not years, my goodness, all of you, 24 months. <laughs> this thing went everywhere I went. It was just like Linus, I needed it. And you can tell, obviously, I did. There was something about it, though. It, it meant so much to me when I was little. And I look at it now and I'm like, that is disgusting. Are you kidding? This Gave meaning and identity. This is what gave me security and safety. Really? I can't hardly believe it. But it was in my formative years that I I needed this. I have a theory. And it's this. No matter how grown up you are, and you feel like you're grown up, right? Some of you. Maybe some of you never will. You and I, we need our version of security blankets. We do it. We do it unconsciously and consciously. We need something to help us cope when life just just hits us right between the eyes. Something that will help us, will turn to. It's going to give us meaning and identity. It's going to be what we turn to when we can't turn anywhere else. But those of us who are more grown up than some of these ones, well, we have our security in different ways, right? Right? We put objects and we make them the most important thing, our home. Like that's going to be the one of safety and security. And so many of us, we we put our attention into that and focus on that. That's where we retreat when we need, when the world's just coming, coming down around us. Still others of us, our security goes into our careers and our jobs And we're pouring our time and our energy and that's how we're going to put our identity into and our value. And when things are going bad, we're going to put more time into that. There are other sacrifices that are going to be made, but the job becomes your security blanket. And still others of us, we put it into people and relationships and family where we're like, you know what? Things may be askew and and topsy-turvy in other ways, but for my family, I am going to pour my love and my attention into that and my children and my grandchildren, they are going to be what I what I really identify with most of all, security blankets in that way. Still others of us do it in our churches and that becomes the identifying piece and we pour our love and our time and our energy into, into our church and that's amazing too. These are all beautiful things. But honestly, they're security blankets. They really are. And the truth is that at some point, 
no matter what that object or thing or even a person is, well, I think they start to look like this in some ways. Joseph and Mary, now 2,000 years ago, they're married now and a census has just been called, so they're traveling to Joseph's hometown. That's how they would need to do this. And Joseph, his security blanket, his identity, the thing he puts stock in is his name and his lineage. You see, he's like the great, 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 you count all those greats, great grandson of King David. So he knew it, and people around him knew it. His hometown of Bethlehem surely knew this. So he and Mary have to trek back to Bethlehem so that the census can be taken. They can be counted by the emperor. And so they're coming back, and his security blanket is his name. And coming back home, this is going to be an amazing homecoming for them and for him. This is the hero coming back. This is the one that everyone's like, wow, that's David. That He's actually... Of the line of David. So the blood of kings and queens flows through Joseph. So when he comes home, not only will they celebrate that, but every home that he comes to, it's going to be open for him. They're they're going to welcome him with with amazing arms and just make sure that every, every need is taken care of. That's his security blanket. And so they get to Bethlehem and they get there and that's not the way it goes. You see... We're told that they get to Bethlehem and there is no room in the Hey, you guys are listening. Good job, good job. Yes, in the inn. Now, we hear that and I think we're, we kind of take it like today's terms. We're like, oh, so the Bethlehem Holiday Inn had no vacancy. So they got to the front desk and the clerk was there like, yes, can I help you, sir? And he's like, yes, can, we'd like a room, please. And uh, we'd prefer that with free Wi-Fi and a poolside one. If you could do that, please. Thank you. And so the clerk's like, just a second. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. There's no vacancy. So uh, he's like, you've got anything else? Please. My wife's very pregnant. And the clerk's like, well, just a second. Yes, we have a stable. That's not how it happens. You see, the, the actual language, and we translate it a little differently. It's not an inn. It's a guest room. There's no room in the guest room. And who would they be guests of? Well, I'll bet a few of you that are coming back, maybe this is your hometown and you're here for the holidays. Who do you stay with nine times out of ten unless you really um, have some family complications? You stay with your family, right? That's what Joseph's doing. He's coming back, this, uh, this celebrity, and he comes back to family and the family says, no. Sorry, Joseph. We don't have room for you. Now, this makes no sense. This is King David's descendant. Their door should be open. So why would that be? Well, he's married to Mary, and we know she's pregnant out of wedlock. So they know their celebrity son is coming home, but they also know that there's some crazy circumstances going on here. And so you almost feel the rejection, the judgment, the door getting slammed in his face. So what now? The security blanket, it's gone. What happens in your life when the world kind of slams a door on you? Is your security blanket going to comfort and console you? Well, Linus, Linus has his security blanket, doesn't he? And he tells us the meaning of Christmas. I can't help but think 2,000 years ago about what happened there. And this is the incredible, amazing thing. God comes in the middle of rejection. God appears, his promise comes to people that others judged and said, no way, you are not fit for that. And I wonder if you, in your life, when things happen and there's nowhere you can turn, if you put your faith and hope and identity and comfort in anything other than the promise of God, your security falls apart. So I wonder today, 2,000 years later, with whatever's going on in your life, if you right now could identify the one thing where you put your stock in, where you put your identity in, where when things are crazy, you're saying this This is what I'm going to find comfort in. A person, career, 
Your bank account? What is it? Was Linus reminds Charlie Brown of the real meaning of Christmas. Here's the amazing thing. It was floating on in social media last week, so I'm blatantly stealing this. It was so amazing. I'd never, I'd never seen this or, or actually taken account of it. When Linus tells the story of Jesus, the one who comes to the rejects, the one where the security blankets are all done for Joseph, they come to shepherds, other rejects that would never be welcomed in town, you know what Linus does? This is amazing. He starts the story and he says, And fear not, behold. When the angel makes the announcement, Linus, who could never be without his blanket, you know what he does? He throws it down. Fear not, because God is there. You may feel rejected. You may have life that's been coming at you in all kinds of ways. I'll bet for some of you, you even feel like church, one like ours or even this one, has shut the door on you for some reason. Whatever that thing is, know this. God came down for exactly that reason. He came to the rejects. He came to the one where the answer was not clear and easy. He comes for you too. So as we close, I want you to see again Linus and how he gives the meaning of Christmas to Charlie Brown and as he gives us that, as that blanket is thrown down, I'm wondering that thing that you've been saying, that's the one I'm putting identity in? If it's anything other than God, can you make a prayer right there as he tosses that? Say, God, I want to make you, I want to make you my security. Your world's going to change. Your life will change because your Savior's with you. Let's watch that together. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Will you pray with me? God, thank you so much for these people, people that have such amazing blessings in their lives, I'm sure, of people and places and things. But God, all too often we put our security, we identify with one thing that becomes our security blanket. God, you know what it is. So God, like Linus, help us to throw it down through your help, through your love, and help us to turn to you today. Remind us that you came to people that were broken, people whose security blankets were no longer useful, that were ragged. These people were ragged. I know in a lot of ways we feel that same way. So God, in the middle of that, help us to hear that promise again. Unto us today, a Savior is here. May our world, may our lives never be the same. In your holy and amazing name we pray. Amen. Amen.